Yeah, so today we will be discussing another method of analyzing networks, um, which is finding groups and networks. Um, and, and this basically is another method of understanding how groups are formed or how um, vertices are tend to form groups that are separate from one another, right? Um, so as with centrality, there are many uh, ways to find groups, right? And we will only be covering four of them, uh, which are component analysis, clicks, modularity, and cohesive blocking. Um, yeah. Um, so component analysis is, is essentially um, it's, it's, as they say here, it's the most basic form uh, of a network group, right? Um, you can also relate it to principal component analysis. It's, it's quite similar, uh, or, or it's not sim exactly similar, but um, yeah, it, 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 it does share some of the uh, ideas behind it, but um, it's, it's not exactly the same. So, in, in this network, for example, um, these are a single, this is a single network, right? It's stored inside a single matrix, okay, which is G3 here. Um, however, it contains two separate groups, also known as components, okay? And so the job of uh, the component uh, function uh, the function that will find those components for us uh, called decompose is to tell us how many groups are in there in these uh, in this in this graph and uh, which edges uh, exist inside of each component, right? And uh, there is one thing that I forgot to mention. As you may remember, um, networks. Uh, can be either directed or undirected. The tiles can be either directed or undirected, right? Lines connecting nodes or edges, right? And uh, if uh, a component is fully connected um, with only undirected links, um, sorry, not undirected links. Um, let's suppose that the, the component is made of uh, or the network is made of um, directed edges, right? Which means that, for example, from this point to this point, uh, a connection can grow from here to here or vice versa, right? And so if we are to assess the connectivity between these two points, the connection can go this way, but may not be able to go to the other way, right? In, in this particular case, if it goes only one way, we say that the network is weakly connected, the component, I'm sorry, is weakly connected. Whereas if it goes both ways, we say that it is strongly connected, right? And this can be, a notion can be expanded to all of the nodes in that single component. Um, so if this node is connected to all of the other nodes, with the directed uh, edges, right? Then, uh, and and all of the nodes essentially are connected to all of the other nodes with directed edges, we say that it's a strongly connected component. Um, it's a, yeah. Whereas if it's only connected uh, with, you know, a single direction with an edge, uh, then we say that it's weakly connected, right? Uh, which is why here, when we are using the decompose function, uh, the mode we're selecting is weak, right? Uh, since if we use the strong mode, it would not detect uh, the these two clusters as is, since you know uh, there are no directed links going back and forth between each and every uh node or vertex inside that network right it's only uh, going in a single direction most of the time or at least that's how i see it anyways um yeah so anyways um after we have using that that decompose function after we've found out the edge lists of 
these two components, we can always plot them, right? And um, yeah, we just here, we just plotted them and we type the titles right above each component and uh, this is what we, okay. So to summarize, um, decompose basically tells you the number of components inside your network and and one crucial detail here is that they have to be completely isolated if they are connected even by a single edge then they cease under that definition they cease to become separate components okay um do you have any questions so far um i'm not sure if um get well uh the idea of decompose, decompose I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, go over it again. Um, let's suppose, uh, let's take a different example. Maybe that will um, also help. Um, so let me put my drawing skills to test here. And suppose we have a network um, which is like this, for example. Right. So this is a network made up of four nodes, okay. And uh, no, it's made up of, let's say, eight nodes, okay. But the connections only um, connect this part together and this part together, right? They, there are no connections connecting these two separate parts, okay? Um, now, if you run decompose on this network, it will produce an edge list of this component and another edge list of this component, right? Which is exactly what happened here. Um, we see that this is the edge list. It tells you that node two is connected to node one, node three is connected to node one and so forth, right? And it's basically the list of connections from nodes with uh, about nodes from one to maybe 17, okay? And uh, as for here, it shows the connections of nodes from 21 to 3940, right? So basically a separate group of nodes here are connected together, right? Which are these nodes. And they are completely isolated together. So they form a single component. And the other group of nodes or vertices are also connected together over here and they are isolated from this one above here so they form a separate component right so essentially when you're uh, trying to use this method in in on a real data set uh, if your network has separate completely isolated um, vertices connecting only together then that will increase the number of components, right? Whereas if the network even has a single link connecting this to this, for example, then the number of components coming out will only be one. Since, you know, they are connected, therefore they are the same part, essentially, according to, the, uh, to how this function is, is formulated. Does that make sense now? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. Okay. Right. Next, we have clicks. I hope I pronounced that right. Cliques. Okay. So, cliques are essentially fully connected subgraphs within a network structures. So, if a good example for that is if you remember the caveman structure. Uh, the caveman network maybe you can actually google that
I don't know if you can so I put this on the YouTube. Whatever. Yeah, so um great. So if you remember, this is a very familiar um network structure that um uh, Mohammed uh showcased in our earlier uh chapter in the in the previous chapter and uh we called it caveman because you know it resembles how cavemen in the stone ages and such um used to form social relations where groups of people stayed in a cave and they only knew about people that lived in the caves next to them but they wouldn't for example know about people in the caves much farther away from them so anyways a clique in that network would be a subgraph that is fully connected, right? So in this case, um, a clique of length five would be, for example, this. This is one clique of, of length five, um, which is um, a group of five vertices that are fully connected, right? And this is also a clique and so on and so forth right and and the idea here is that you control the number of um, vertices um, that you use to measure the, the number of clicks um, and if you leave that unspecified you essentially um, what's it called um, you count the all the, the possible numbers of uh, combinations of uh, of subgraphs of connected subgraphs of fully connected subgraphs so uh, a very familiar example to to clarify what i just said is you know the popular uh, what's it called um puzzles right that for example tell you about this shape um, and ask you how many triangles are in this shape, right? And uh, if you were to look at it real quick, maybe this one would be a first triangle, this would be a second, this would be a third, right? And then if you combine these two together, that would be the fourth, these two together, it would be the fifth, and then the big one would be the sixth, right? So essentially you are counting the number of sub triangles inside of the triangle itself right and and you basically here apply the same concept only to networks um, when you're not specifying the number of uh, uh, what's it called oh the size the size of the clique that you're uh, counting right so for our purpose here um, for for these networks, I think he, they use they use the G one network, which is this one only, right? And they connect. They counted all the possible subgraphs that are fully connected. So, for example, only these two points would constitute a subgraph that is fully connected. And then, if perhaps, so you take all the combinations of two nodes or two vertices that are connected and you count those and then you take all the combinations of three vertices and you count those and four vertices and so on and so forth until you reach the number of vertices in the whole graph right and that number as you may have guessed is is quite large it ends up being around 467 clicks um does that make sense so far uh, yes, so the purpose here, we can, we try to calculate the uh, certain size of the uh, network or all possible, uh, or, um, all possible size that um, can we calculate from different aspects or, or maybe different types of network networks. Yes, so so the the basic idea here is that. Um, yeah, for, for this particular function, at least, um, here we count all the possible sizes, right? 
And that number, even for a small network like this, you know, it's, it can be pretty overwhelming. So imagine if we were to apply this on a real network uh, that is, you know, it has a lot more nodes than this, then the number would be huge, right? And, and for example, we may only be interested in cliques of a certain size. For example, if we are um, working with a social network and we have um, networks of, of families, right? Then for example, you may want to make the minimum size of a clique three and perhaps the larger, hypothetical size of a clique to be seven saying that uh, theorizing that this is the the maximum size for a certain family right um, you wouldn't want to count the cliques that are size 50 for example since hypothetically speaking there are no families that uh, are that big right um, nuclear ones at least so uh, I, did that answer your question uh, yes but uh, still I want to know exactly what the verbs here. If we, we just want to calculate certain size, um, I mean, mm -hmm. um, can you give us, uh, give me more clarification to exam uh, maybe examples? Um, so an example about the size part, right? I, I mean, uh, if we, or uh, why would we want to count the cliques? Is that uh, the your question? Um, I mean, if we want to, it's it's just hypothetical and not real network. Uh, what's the purpose of uh, calculating certain size, not uh, calculating the real uh, network size? Okay, so just to clarify here. Um, this um, the size argument is something that you um, choose and you can apply that to any type of network right so um, what i meant when i was talking about the size argument was that you can use that in order to specify the size of the cliques that you want to measure right and uh, so if you are working on something hypothetical like this example here uh, it, you're free to choose whatever you want. And if you're working on something real as well, you've, you're free to choose what you want. And uh, as I was trying to mention in the social network, for example, that contains uh, cliques of families, um, it, it wouldn't make sense to leave the max size of cliques completely open, right? Um, maybe it would be better to make, put a maximum number here so that you don't end up counting two families as one family, right? And at the same time, you maybe want to keep the minimum number to three if you want to count a family with, for example, a father, mother, and a child, right? Um, to uh, And have that as the minimum size of a clique that you want to be counted. Um, did I make sense now? If not, please um, just ask away, yeah. Yes, get it. Thank you. So it just depends on in case, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes. Um, in the example provided here, uh, he randomly chooses that size in order to, you know, showcase the power of the method, basically. And what they did here actually is that they divided the cliques of length four by the total number of clicks of all sizes in order to see how many or the percentage of those clicks out of the total number of clicks in the network. And what the number that came out here, um, I, I'm not sure if, why these two numbers do not match, but um, in any ways, let's take that one. So clicks of size four constitute about 25% of the total clicks in the network, okay? Yeah. Next, um, we have something called cohesive blocking. Um, so essentially that is a development of the idea of cliques um, where it starts at the level of the component. You can think of this as a combination of these two methods actually, right? Um, 
So it starts at the level of component, right? And then identifies the subgraphs inside each component, right? Um, yeah, and, and it keeps on doing that until it reaches the cliques. Um, so if we check, um, I actually ran these on my uh, notebook here. Give me a second. Yes, this is it. Um, this is the one that uses cohesiveness. I think they mentioned in uh, the coding vault, um, the cohesion is uh, the minimum number of doing what? Uh, to the minimum number of uh, removing, or, or I think something like that. Yes, exactly. As you mentioned, it's the cohesion score is the minimum number of vertices that you must remove in order to make the block not strongly connected. Right, and then plot hierarchy shows you the number of blocks. So essentially, here we end up with um, four blocks. Right, so this is the block number one, which contains all forty vertices. Right, and in the hierarchy graph, it sits right at the top. And then that this large uh, block can be split into two component blocks. Right, which is component two from 1 to 20 and component, uh, sorry, uh, 2 from 21 to 40 and component 3 from 1 to 20, which if you remember is exactly this, uh, the example from component analysis, right? And then it goes one step further and takes a subcomponent or a subgraph of um, the third, com uh, sorry, the second component, right? Which I calls it the fourth um, subgraph, right? So essentially, uh, sorry, so the fourth block. So essentially what it does is that it does decomposition here, and then it takes that one and calculates the cliques for that, right? Um, the, does that does that make sense so far? And then finally, it, it um, calculates the cohesion score. And so for this the first one, the cohesion score is zero, um since um it is not strongly connected i believe um the for the second one the creation score is five which is the minimum number of uh, uh vertices you have to remove so that is not strongly connected and then it's eight here and then here it's six um does that make sense so um mm -hmm. see, see uh, if um we didn't remove anything like zero value here. Does this mean um, this network in origin uh, is, uh, is weak? It's not strongly connected. Yes, it is weakly connected uh, right from the beginning, um, which is, you know, it does yeah. make sense because if we check here the graph, you know, there are no connections connecting these two components. Actually, I'm not sure if it applies to this particular. It applies to this one, right? And uh, yeah, it's an undirected network, right? Um, Yeah, so so I think this is the case. Yes, it, it does that use the, the example combining um, these two networks, G2 and G4, into a single network, and then um, it, it uh, runs on, on these two uh, 
right? And uh, these two are not strongly connected because you know they're not actually connected at all. So it, it does make sense. But when you go on to the level of a single component, yes, this can be strongly connected and the minimum number of components uh, of edges that you need to remove, uh, I'm sorry, of vertices that you need to remove would be five for here, for example. And for this one would be something like um, eight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Last but not least, um, this example discusses something called group detection, which is an improvement uh, uh, on the uh, components idea. So as I've mentioned earlier, the bad thing about components is that each component has to be completely isolated from the other in order to be classified as a problem. So even if there was a single link connecting these two parts together, then the decompose function would not identify them as two separate components, even though it's so clear here that they are two are, these two are separate. So in order to overcome this uh, problem, um, they came up with group detection algorithms, right? And uh, one um, algorithm that has been showcased here is called the Griezmann and Newman algorithm. Um, so if you go back to the betweenness centrality, um, let's, let's try to remember it together. It uh, counts, I believe, the number of shortest paths, something along those lines. Let's actually revise it together because I can't remember. Yes, so it counts the uh, how many times a single node is on the shortest paths between the nodes and a graph, right? Just think of it this way. These four connections here are the only link between this component and that component, right? So they are very crucial to the structure of the network. If you cut those, then these components will cease to be connected, right? And so what this algorithm does is that it calculates the, or it, it checks which paths are the most crucial for the network uh, in the sense that they constitute the shortest paths, right? The highest number of shortest paths. And it takes them out one by one and then calculates the number of components, right? I, I think this was uh, explained here in a much more simplified graph where, as you can see, the length from C to D, this edge, constitutes nine shortest paths inside of that graph, right? And so if you were to run the algorithm, the Griffin Newman algorithm, it would start by dropping this edge, right? And then counting the number of, of components, I believe. And then it would recalculate the between the centrality for every remaining edge and then remove the edge with the highest between centrality and so on and so forth. So it keeps on iterating on that process and uh, uses that somehow to calculate the number of components um, despite having those connections, right? So the basic idea is that it understands or it counts the number of components that are connected via a very small number of connections, right? Uh, that's the uh, TLDR version. Um, and so what the algorithm does here actually is that it keeps on cutting as as what as we've mentioned here. So after this cut is done, it keeps on cutting all of the rest of them and and it measures the modularity, which is something I will go into in a second. It measures the modularity of the newly formed network after each cut, right? And so after the first cut, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the zeroth cut, um, this is probably at zero, not at one. Um, 
there's only one component and therefore uh, the modularity is zero, but at exactly two cuts, uh, think of it as cutting all of these links all together, right? Um, then you end up with, with two components and the modularity is quite high. Uh, and so, you know, there are some inconsistencies, but the general idea is that um, two cuts are, are essentially what works best here. And uh, I actually ran the code here again. And uh, yes, so um, this plot was done using one of the algorithms, uh, another one actually, it's called edge between the sensor clustering. Um, and uh, using only two components, um, it achieves the highest modularity. So what exactly is modularity? Um, I think it's discussed right down here. Yes. So modularity is, is basically uh, a measure of the number of connections inside uh, a component compared to the number of connections going outside of the component, right? So in the example here, we find that there are a lot of connections inside of the red component here, and only about four connections going outside of the red component, right? And the same thing for the blue component, which means these are highly modular. Whereas if we, for example, try to um, plot um, it with, with 10 components, you can find that the modularity drops significantly, right? So for example, for this uh, blue component, you can see that there are many connections inside of it, but there are almost as many connections going to nodes outside of the blue shaded area as well, right? And so the modularity score ultimately drops. Um, and, and this is showcased here um, in the number of components. As you increase the number of components, the modularity decreases for that network. And once you reach 20, it's also really nice to see. So let's visualize that. You use every single node as a component on its own. And so the modularity is close to zero because almost every connection is going to outside of the components and none of the connections are going inside the component. Um, does modularity make sense? Uh, yes, I, I'm understanding the idea, but I'm um, still wondering why. <laughs> Yeah, why at 10 point, 10 to 20 um, mm -hmm. it drops, and then um, after that, uh, each component uh, it becomes component to with itself. Yes, so what the, yeah, I, I kind of understand what you mean. So what the algorithm does here is that it, chooses the number of components based on the, uh, it chooses, you know, it cuts starting with the edges with the highest between the centrality, right? Um, so if I ask it, can you please give me two components, then it will start by cutting here and then, oh, there's this component and that component, right? However, if I ask it to give me three components, right? Then, and, and we can go down a little bit. Uh, so it will cut the one here originally, right? And then it will have to choose out of these similar uh, edges with the same between the centrality. Let's say, for example, it will cut this one and that one in order to isolate this from the two others. And then you will have this component that component and that component, right? And and the thing is, it those two were chosen randomly, right? Because these 
all these six edges have the same between the centrality, right? So it could have been anyone. If, if I got your question, right? Could have been any of these six edges uh, cut, uh, that get cut, and uh, any of these six nodes could have been chosen as the third component in this particular graph. Um, does that answer your question? Um, I think part of it, and um, I mean, if we cut all uh, these edges, yeah, then reach to uh, to any uh, maybe number of cuts. I, uh, why modularity drops again? Yeah, so let's um, use this example. Um, in this case, the maximum, do you know the maximum number of components that we can have in this particular graph? Six. Exactly, yes, that's great. So if we choose the number of components to be six, right? Um, so we have a circle here. Uh, let's actually, uh, if, if you'll allow me to clear, and we can go up, okay? And so this will be your first component. This is your second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. I'm not so good at drawing circles with my mouse. But anyways, um, now, can you name or point to a single edge in this network that remains inside of the component? It's, it's not possible, right? Because the component contains Sorry, only... Didn't hear. Yeah, yeah. Can you point to a single edge in this graph made up of six components that is connected within the particular component? Or do all, do all edges point to outside of the component, right? So modularity, as we've mentioned, it's a measure of the uh, density of connections inside of components compared to those going outside. Right? So because in this example, all connections are going outside, right? So it ends up being zero. Whereas in the other extreme, if you only have a single component inside that graph, um, yeah, a single component, then all of the edges are inside of it, right? And in that case, the modularity would be one. Um, does that make sense? So one is the result of dividing a uh, number of what uh, by I, number I don't of know what? how it is calculated to be honest um, and I'm not sure it's going to be it's going to be one either but it's going to be a high number right so um, in the example we mentioned earlier um, the modularity um, let's check it here yeah the modularity after only choosing two components seems to be close to 0 0.5 Right, and this is the highest it got. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, does that make sense, or you, do you want to discuss it some more? Uh, mm -hmm. If we have time, can you can you just repeat? Um, uh, Comparison between number one and zero. Uh, in the modularity, uh, right? Yes. Yes, sure thing. Um, Thank you. So let's check the example in the code here, right? You see, um, this graph is. Uh, it checks for us 
the number of components we use, right? And measures the modularity for each number of components, okay? So in the example with the highest modularity, which is using two components, right? You see all those connections, right? So inside of the circle, how many connections are staying inside of it, right? Yes. Yeah, so most of the connections are staying inside of that red circle and most of the connections are staying inside of that blue circle. Only four connections travel between circles, right? So in that case, the modularity is quite high, right? Yes. What happens when we increase the number of circles or the number of components to 20, which is the other extreme example, is that all of the connections travel between circles, right? In that case, none of the connections stay within the circle. You know, you may have some connections that stay anyways, inside of the circle if for example it, you have a connection that goes back to the node itself right uh, but in that graph that doesn't exist so all connections travel outside of the components and so modularity is quite low and yeah. uh, this um if this mean uh, this relate to one value uh, i mean when uh, removal of one connection, right? Um, actually, I'm not sure. I understand what you're saying uh, because the modularity is supposed to be high if you know everything is within a single component. Um, however, this is not the case, which probably has to do with how modularity is calculated. And I'm not sure I I know about how is that how that is done actually. Um, I don't think it so was mentioned. Yeah. So at this point, um, we can say uh, zero value um, mm -hmm. if we didn't remove any connection, either outside or inside, right? So the modularity is still uh, um, zero. No, no, I, I want you to forget about removing connections, okay? Because this is related to how the computer thinks, you know, because computers are not so smart, they need, um, uh, algorithms to be, you know, uh, it's, a, it's like uh, telling them how to think about what we think about in a, in a you know, in an instinctual way. So let's let's go back to thinking logically for a second. Uh, we don't remove anything, right? We we just draw all of the components. If we want to just twenty components, we draw a component around each vertex, and that's it. Um, but as to how the computer does it. It, it has to figure out which, uh, how to put a circle each time and stuff like that. And so it uses the, uh, I think it was called the something Newman algorithm. Um, yeah, the Gervin Newman algorithm in order to um, figure that out. But but those details are not entirely crucial. Yeah. Uh, I can actually um, send you this um link and and uh, i'd be happy to discuss it some more um after you've given us a reading but the thing is um there are many many algorithms that are that are used uh, in order to um calculate uh, you know what's it called um the number of components right and and the thing is um each algorithm works better with a certain structure of a graph. Um, so for example, the multi-level algorithms work best with undirected graphs. Um, and for directed graphs, we usually go with walk trap or edge between this or even informant, okay? Um, and that's the thing. There are actually many more um, what's it called, many more algorithms that are used. Um, and uh, if we are curious about them, yes. So 
Yeah, that's a lot of them. And it mentions which ones they work with and which ones they don't. And uh, the runtime here is uh, mentions how fast they are. Um, yeah. So you basically choose the one that fits the network you're working with the best. Um, sorry if I interrupted you. Yeah, you, you were saying something. I no, no, I'm just thinking. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so this is it basically. Um, what they did actually all of that code here is that they tried to uh, create a simple version of the Gervin Newman algorithm. Um, but you know, people have done that for us already. They have made packages that can finish that or that stuff in the background and you know, give us this with a single line of code. So yeah, it helps to write the thing on your own in order to better understand it. But uh, at the end of the day, if you want to get things done, then you just use the package. Yeah, so uh, I think this is it for today. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to ask about? No, I'm thank you. Ask. Okay, yeah, thank you for uh, for being here. Uh, I'm sure we both missed Muhammad, but uh, we're gonna have to catch up next meeting. So yeah, yeah see you next time. Thank Sunday. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.